and the second thing is it has a time period. Um, yes. Some of those charges have a component in them called local function charges will be, will be not withheld, if you like, by the state within three years. Um, that seven-year example, Brent, you mentioned four or five years to get approvals. We're not getting the approvals through quick enough to take advantage of the charges. If I could have said one thing to the Treasurer, lengthen the time period for the infrastructure charges to apply, uh, and that would be one thing, and also retrospective to approvals currently held today. Okay, and send us a list of those, uh, those uh, particular applications, please. Uh, you want some more? Um, up the back, sir. Uh, um, Two years, 17 days to do a two-lot subdivision application, $120,000 in planning, $140,000 to complete the conditions. Um, so, uh, and in terms of the planning directorate, it was all done within time because they kept on asking for extensions of time to be uh, granted, otherwise they'd give us a damned refusal. So there's a serious problem in the culture fighting the development applications that go in, and if you want a suggestion for how to improve it, I would say that if we went through and looked at every application that's currently being appealed, because ultimately the back's been broken on the work, we'd see whether or not if, if all of the things that are being appealed need to be fought for at the moment in the courts, and whether or not we could actually sit down with all of the people that have got those applications in and have in invested yes. hundreds of thousands of dollars with the fee farm that is the consultants, okay, let's get a list of all of, the, all of the applications that are being appealed and see whether or not we really need to be fighting on everything because there's a whole lot of potentially shovel-ready jobs to get going. So who would do that? Who's the best person to do that? Uh, Dawn. Dawn? Um, yes, I can answer that. In the good old days, we used to have Planning Development North, Planning and Development South, and you all councillors were one on one or the other. And then what happened is the applicant used to ring up and say, look, I don't like that condition that you put on me last um, Monday, so we'd go back to council and ask that it be referred back. The applicant would come into the committee, we'd thrash it out there and then, and it'd be over and done with. And that was it. Only last week I was told in town planning, we've got eight town planners that are just on appeals. Eight town planners just doing appeals. It's not right. It's got to be negotiated better than that. And what happens for the negotiation? You go back to the officers and the chair of planning and maybe the divisional council but, but only. But can't the councillors change that? So that, yeah, that process should be changed. Yeah, so, but you're saying it should be changed. You're, you're a councillor. Do, do other councillors agree that it should be changed? Eight Councilor votes should Douglas? burn the city down. Sorry? What somebody said. Eight votes should burn the city down. We haven't got the eight votes. And another thing was I had an applicant come to my office last week and with his town planner... And he wanted to put a CBD university up high-rise in Southport. But he was um, a Taiwanese gentleman, got plenty of money, but he balked at the $132,000 application fee. Like all Chinese, he wanted cheaper. So I went to planning and I went to the chairman of planning and I said, look, can we put that on at the end of the case, you know? $132,000. And I was told uh, by the planning department, do you realise that's a $200 million job? I go, yes. Well, that's more reason why, you know, $132,000 shouldn't be charged. $200 million, he's ready to go now. So, but I can't get that taken away, so I don't even know if he'll lodge the application. Right, Maybe well we should go back to New South Wales where it's a major project. State takes it over. So, but what, what do you need for that to be approved? You're the elected rep. You're, you're saying that your planning committee won't ask the, or won't allow you to do this. No. Is it Ron Clark or is it a majority? No, the planning council? officers said, you give us more town planners and we might be able, you know, sorry, you give us more money in our budget and we might be able to stop that $132,000. So, uh, but they, they said it's going to cost that to process this application and we haven't got any Paul more money. Paul if your town planners came to you and said that, what would you say? Well, actually, one did. He doesn't work for anymore. <laughs> <laughs>
and, and that's and that's exactly right because planners do not run the city. And I can tell they're there to, there to service the people. And I don't want them to do anything illegal, but I want them to use common sense and dealing with people. And when someone comes to the front counter, thank you for investing in our city. Well, not tell them bang, bang, bang. Because I think Madonna, there is an attitude in, the, in the, the way we train our planners, and it's not a customer service one. And unfortunately, we've worked very hard. We've got some great planners at Ipswich now, and it's a fantastic city. Because we're working together as one. And whether you're the mayor or the planner, we're not titles. We all have a responsibility to get the city going, full stop. Bob. Madonna, I have one quick question. Yeah. We're, we're addressing all these questions about infrastructure charges, time taken and everything else to the councillors. But we've got Warren Rowe sitting in here, who is in charge of that department. I, I think we've asked the questions of the wrong people. I was talking about a cultural change. And part of that cultural change is the fact that there is an opinion out there and a, and a perception out there in the public that... The administration is running this city, not the councillors. And, the, and that's because they're not strong enough to stand up the administration. They haven't got the leadership. So, by default, the administration is running it. I'd like to ask Warren Rowe what he's going to do about it because he's in charge of it. Are you happy to answer that question? I, I, Madonna, I've, uh, I've come here to listen, basically, and, uh, and I've had uh, a lot of... Uh, uh, a lot of interesting comments uh, made, some of which I agree with, um, some of which I don't uh, necessarily agree with, but uh, always happy to engage Bob in any discussion that he might uh, care to make about how we can improve but things. E e even Councillor ha has just kind of empowered you to, to, to the decision maker in many of these processes. What do you think needs to be done? Do you need another 10 staff? Do no. you need Hell to no. look at the forms that Logan has? Or, or do our, you... our forms are exactly the same as Logan's and, uh, and, uh, and Ipswich's. They, but, they, so uh, why are these people having, having a problem here and not in Logan or it switch? Um, it, it's not up to me to actually comment on some of the things that were actually uh, set up there. Um, I mean, I can produce all sorts of stats that suggest that our time frames are, and I'm quite happy to do that, and, and, and uh, uh, Stephen knows that, uh, that we have those stats that, produ that we produce that show that we are turning stuff around equally, if not better, than Ipswich and, uh, and Logan. So the perception is often not quite the reality. So, um, but as I said, I'm, I'm here to listen and, um, and we'll be taking a lot of Madonna, sorts of comments Madonna, the council is there to, Im to put in place policies and it's uh, their job to implement those policies. If the policies aren't working, that's where it comes back to the council. That's, that's not what, what Dawn Critchlow was and, just and saying, And that's though. what we have been doing with the industry, having many meetings, Stephen Harrison and many representatives from the industry have been sitting around the table. Oh. So we are at a point where we have got a lot of feedback and we are moving forward dealing with those issues. All right. So I don't want to put an officer on the spot. If you're not happy with the policy, look at me and Peter and Dawn and Susie and Grant. So, all right, so, so I am looking at you yep. and, and, and given what everyone has said today, from the culture of the decision-making process to the time frame, to the forms that are filled out, filled out to the charges, the, there seems to be a problem in dealing with council. Do you have any power as a group of councillors we, without the mayor? We have, we have the power so by what, majority to change those policies. So what, what could you say, walking out of here, well, that you are committed to going back and looking at doing? Well, the two big issues are your charges and the time frame to process. And I'm saying, give us the list of those applications that the industry believes that we are holding you back by moving forward on those so we can work through those. If we have to change the process, uh, if we have to put more stuff on and that's not something that I can do, let's look at that because we want to work with you. In terms of the charges, the state has set the maximum. We are not. We are not charging the maximum. And what needs no, to be they made set clear, a minimum. We are not charging yep. the. Ma we are below the cap, and and what's more important is those charges are not all Gold Coast City charges. Half of them are water charges. All right. So we need to also work work with all connects with the water authorities so that they can do something with their charge. We prepared to look at someone's trying to sabotage this. We're prepared to look at some holiday relief, if you want to call it, with PIP charges for targeted areas. And we are working with the industry to look at where we can move forward. All right. And you proved to us that these projects will commence. They will commence straight away. And, uh, and I'm sure that we can take that to the table. Well, 
can I just also say another important thing? And what everyone's forgetting, there is a process at the moment where there is the opportunity to, to defer the payments if necessary. So we're not stopping the industry. We are not stopping the industry. We, if anything, we are working with the industry. All right. So c can I, I need to draw this to a close or, yes. or we're going to be out of time. Could There's a, a couple question, of... Please? There's a couple of things that uh, I would like to, to see done, and that is you have those suggestion sheets. If you can just leave them on the table or give them to reception as you go out, and, and if we can be as positive uh, as we can and put down a specific idea, but could I put the councillors on the spot and say, are you prepared to stay here for 10 minutes and anyone with a specific development problem, a specific time yep. frame problem, uh, you are happy for them to come up yep. and see you yep. and you will promise that you personally will get back to each one of them? We always do. Okay. Could you please put... Can, can I ask a question, please? Uh, um, Susie Douglas, I just wanted to say, um, in terms of um, suggestions on there, I think um, the, the audience might want to know what we're doing with the fly-in, fly-out uh, industry. Uh, we've actually got a hangar down at the airport. We've got um, airlines willing to come in, and we are trying to attract the mining industries here, based here, uh, uh, miners to be able to fly in and fly out. So there's a whole other industry we're working on at the moment, which will be... Madonna, I've been waiting you... patiently here to ask a question, please. Hello? Sorry. I have been waiting no, uh, patiently. No, sir, I, th I think you've had your chance. And, and uh, who is your question to, can I ask? Uh, Eddie Saroff. Uh, uh, Councillor Saroff, will you stay around and have that question answered, please? I um, made that commitment. All happy right. To stay Peter Young time. and our councillors, are you happy to stay? Along with our mayoral candidates, um, please feel free to come up and see them. Uh, our our uh, panel today have put aside their morning to try and get to the bottom of some of these issues. Hopefully this is just the first part of a conversation that continues to go somewhere. Can I please ask you to put your hands together for them? And Stephen, back to you. Look, I was just going to quickly say in closing, um, we as an industry, as a city, as an economy, need to help ourselves before um, you know, we, I guess, start looking at two to five to ten years' time. We need to come up with these solutions together. We need to come up with these solutions and put them down so that we can give it to local government, we can give it to state government, or we ourselves can implement them. And they need to be... You know, some in the short term, some in the long term, some in the medium term. But we've, we've got to, if I can ask every one of you today, if you can come up with, if you can write something down, if you can come up with some sort of solution. I mean, that's the point of this morning is not to make it a talk fest, but we need quantifiable solutions to put in place to improve where we're at the moment. The comment was made before, we have the world's best location. We just need to put the right environment in place that's more conducive or most conducive for business investment, whether it's in construction, development, whether it's in tourism, marine, whatever. We have the framework there. We just need to make it happen and make it happen quickly.